then we Also attending court today is Deputy Inspector General of Police, Mr. Gilbert Masengeli. He does so in compliance with the order of court issued on the 13th of September 2024. And this is within the time span prescribed by your Lordship in the order your Lordship had generously and graciously directed. Mr. Gilbert Masengeli can avoid serving the sentence if he complies with the direction to obey the court summons. I thus suspend this sentence for seven days only. The acting Inspector General of Police can redeem himself and comply by availing issues he has been avoiding within seven days. In default, the sentence shall automatically become effective. End of quote. My Lord, the court summons in question and bespoken by your Lordship in that order and to which the first respondent was to answer had been made on the 26th of August 2024 in which your Lordship rendered as follows. That summons to issue to the first respondent to appear in court on the next mention to explain why the habeas corpus orders issued by the court were not complied with. <coughs> the matter was fixed for mention on 3rd of September 2024. My Lord, it is our first duty to explain the reasons why hitherto Mr. Masengeli has been unable to make a personal appearance in court in answer to the court summons. This inability has been misrepresented by both the petitioners and certain press reports. It has widely but incorrect been alleged that the summons thereby issued have been either ignored or defied <coughs> No, I'm not. I'm talking generally. Thank you, my lord. My lord, I'm saying that because the misrepresentation and the miscorrections not only affect the respondent, Mr. Masengeli, as an individual, but they also, resp they also affect the executive and other branches of government. So it is not just a personal matter. It has widely but incorrect be, been alleged that the summons thereby issued have been either ignored or defied, reportedly as an act of arrogant disregard for this Honorable Court's authority and its constitutional mandate. Nothing could be further from the truth, and regrettably, it has not been possible to prefer a full explanation of the situation until now. My Lord, on each occasion when the personal attendance in court by Mr. Masengeli was required, he was disabled from doing so by pressing exigencies of duty out of Nairobi. And on each such instance, discreet attempts were made to communicate these difficulties to court without having to disclose delicate and sensitive operational detail which were of national security nature. When the orders of 26th of August 2024 were served on the first respondent on the 29th of August, Mr. Masengeli in his capacity as the acting head of the police service was already in Lamu on official duty. When the orders of 26th of August 2024 were served on the first respondent on the 29th of August, 
Mr. Masengeli, in his capacity as the acting head of the police service, was already in Lamu on official duty. As is now common public knowledge, that region suffers from an <coughs> a very tenuous security situation. Mr. Masengeli and other national security operatives had traveled to attend to urgent security concerns. Accordingly, the director of legal of the National Police Service, Mr. Charles Otiende, was detailed to attend court at the next mention of the matter on the 3rd of September 2024. He was to inform the court of the circumstances under which, thus far, the first respondent had been incapable or disabled from complying substantively with the Harbour Scopus application. However, the official was seized with information which would reply to the court's questions relating to the Harbour Scopus. The instructions Mr. Utiende, to Mr. Utiende were issued on the understanding that, on a reasonable reading and construction of the order of 26th of August 2024, the first respondent could be represented in court by any competent officer or official. Mr. Masengeli had also been, had also been advised that the court proceedings on the 3rd of September were scheduled to be virtual and that the representative of the first respondent could attend virtually. My Lord, in a further effort to assist the court in, it, in its inquiry, the respondents filed an affidavit on the 4th of September 2024 in reply to the ones filed by the petitioners. In his affidavit, he set out an account of how the first respondent received a missing persons report and the ongoing investigation measures that it was undertaking to trace the whereabouts of the missing individuals. My Lord, when the matter was again mentioned in court on the 5th of September, Mr. Masengeli was still engaged in the security operations in the coast region. He provided an affidavit and affidavit evidence to this effect as an extra GM2. This was the relevant police signal with OB numbers indicating the brutal murder of four men in Taita Tana River County presumably as a retaliatory attack in an ongoing clan dispute, which was spiraling out of control. As a result, the first respondent was represented in court by the aforementioned counsel, Mr. Utiende. Mr. Simon Kirui, the officer in charge of Directorate of Criminal Investigations, Kitengela, also attended, and Mr. Joseph Indeke, the investigating officer in the subject matter of the disappearance, also attended. After the court proceedings of the 5th of September, it was understood that Mr. Masengeli's personal attendance in court was required on 9th of September. On which date? 5th. After the 5th year, mm -hmm. the affidavit was filed on the 4th, but on the 5th it was clear that Mr. Masengeli's personal attendance in court was required on September 9th, or 9th of September. However, in the interim, the security situation had deteriorated considerably and increased in its uh, complexity. As demonstration by an ex demonstrated by an access to Mr. Misangeli's aff affidavit marked GM3. It is a police signal, complete with OB numbers, indicating an Al-Shabaab attack on one of the police stations in Wajia County, which event demanded Mr. Masengeli's with other senior security personnel, personal attendance. My Lord, national security is the protection against internal and external threats to Kenya's territory and territorial integrity and sovereignty. It's the protection of Kenya and its people their rights, freedom, property, peace, stability, and prosperity, and other national interests, as enshrined in Article 238-239 of the Constitution. All institutions of and in the Republic exist 
under the aegis of a secure sovereign military. The primary object of any national security organ and security system, including the National Police Service, is to promote and guarantee national security in accordance with the principles mentioned in Article 238.2 of the Constitution. The fundamental nature of national security cannot therefore be overstated. But it is also equally fundamental under fundamental constitutional principle that the national security organs are subordinate to civilian authority, Article 239.5. That is why, despite the excruciating and heavy security demand upon him at the material time, Mr. Masengeli nonetheless saw it fit that the DIG Mr. Eliud Lagat attends court on the 9th of September and he attended for the first respondent, he wasn't given audience, and it now transpires that, given the specificity of the orders issued by the court latterly, and quite understandably, Mr. Lagarde could not and did not have audience before the court. When the court sentenced Mr. Masengeli on the 13th of September 2024 for contempt of court, he was still in Masabit County coordinating security operations. An extra 4, G4, in his affidavit is a police signal with OB numbers <coughs> indicating that an unknown number of armed militia so had attacked a bus service. Him, where was he? Sorry? Where was uh, he at the time of the sentence? Oh, this, uh, when, this, the, when the court sentence, on the 13th of September, <coughs> he was still in Massabit County, my lord, coordinating security operations. And that is evidenced by an extra 4, G4, in his affidavit, which is a police signal. It has OB numbers, indicating that an unknown number of armed militia had attacked a bus, a bus service vehicle registration, KCX039N, <coughs> and had spread it with bu bullets with catastrophic results. My Lord, the main objective in setting out the foregoing facts in extensio is not to excuse the failure by Mr. Matengeli, Masengeli to attend court. It is hoped, however, my Lord, that it will demonstrate that he did not deliberately degenerate this honorable court as has been characterized by counsel for the petitioners and others. Nor do the facts show that he did not recognize the authority of this honorable court. The apology which he wishes to tender, and duly tenders to this honorable court today, is without reserve. It was clearly tendered earlier in his affidavit of 12th September 2024, and it is repeated here. In my humble submission, my Lord, I plead with this Honorable Court to take into account the extenuating circumstances narrated by Mr. Masengeli in his affidavit My Lord, this is not just a simple instance of clash of loyalties. It is rather a case of a security official caught up in the horns of a dilemma, whilst in the midst of a, of a serious and delicate security emergency. It is easy in such circumstances for one, perhaps without deliberate intention, but instinctively to gravitate towards national security operations over personal tribulations. My Lord, it is on this basis that we plead with you to exercise your judicial discretion to incline towards grace. My Lord, may you tamper justice with mercy in the realization that the actions of Mr. Masengeli in his case 
were not Shia or Brazil, but of loyalty of a citizen. Gone wary in the course of doing his best in a bad situation to serve two pressing and seemingly equally demanding solemn duties. I further plead with you to take into account the contemners' promise to file regularly a progress report on the investigations regarding the missing persons or any update therefrom. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for giving me audience. The last time I appeared before you, it was in a different capacity. I'm grateful you gave me that audience. Thank you, and I'm obliged. Yes, my Lord. Um, I wish to inform the court that uh, Mr. Masengeli is present and ready to take the stand to explain himself, as was directed by the court. I am praying that he be sworn in so that uh, we can lead him through the process of complying with the court's order, my Lord. I will go to the petitioners now. Yeah, I will also give you time to address the court. My Lord, uh, I've listened to what uh, the Attorney General has said. Two points were outstanding. She said that there were discreet attempts to reach the court explain serious matters of national security. So what is this creative things? What the court makes out of those statements is really difficult. But from our side, we find it extremely deplorable that the office of the attorney general will admit that there was interference with the judge insofar as this matter is concerned. We'll leave it at that for now. Number two, the Honorable Attorney General. Lord, I wish to take objection. Kindly. I wish to take objection. What is the objection? That is a very major accusation. May please take your seat. That is a very major accusation. And he has to put on record where I said that there was effort or where I was admitting that the judge was interfered with as the attorney general. And from my statement where I admitted that there was interference with the judge. So Mr. Nelson, Mr. Navi, did you? Number, yeah. number, number two. <laughs> I'm old enough not to be distracted from no, my life. Kindly, kindly respond to that. It is important. You have made a she, very serious... She, I, I she has a written uh, speech, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Where she said there were discreet attempts to reach the court to explain the Madam delegate nature. Madam, given a dictionary to define the word attempt. Okay. Um, what did you hear? No, I will not withdraw. We are on live camera. They will play that clip if, if, if she, she says she didn't say it. But I finished what I was saying on issue number one. Let me go to number two. You, you can go back to your, to your notes. She said they were discreet attempts. Yes. Attempts? Yes. Uh, yes, respect your office. It's there.
Well, I can't see it, but uh, so what I chance our citizen Johnny will hear. It. <laughs> so <laughs> number. I, 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 I think Mr. 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 Habi, you know we are. Uh, this is a court of law. Yes. Uh, the public is watching. Yes. Kindly let that. Uh, as a judge, I can say that. Well, maybe it has missed. I have missed it, but I, I don't think I have heard that. Okay, the court may not have heard. I may not have heard that. But we heard it. And uh, if there were discreet attempts, then uh, I don't know where they were being made. It's okay, my lord. Yeah. Could you allow me to go to number but two? Let's proceed. Yeah. I'm not apologizing, friends. We're dealing with a serious enterprise here. Since you are reading a, a statement, yes. is it... Uh, in your statement that you are making discreet attempts to approach the court or something. Hello. What is it that you say so that it is yes. clear for the record? Because I may not have captured each and every word. My Lord, if they can make a copy, they can supply a copy to the court. Yeah, let's let's find but out. I said there were discreet attempts. We have a right to respond to, to the speech. Give the information to the information the given on national se national security matter, <laughs> and I stand by that because national security matters cannot be written and cannot be said in public. And if it is a mat na matter of national security, all three arms of government collapse into one, and it can be. Alright, uh, I didn't hear. I think then. Uh, Here's a great, my lord. Irish was reading, I was listening. <laughs> it was an attempt. It didn't, it yeah, it was an attempt. An attempt is a serious, as a committed action. So, my lord, permit me to finish. I'll, I'll okay, be very short. Yeah, proceed, proceed. Yes. So, the second fundamental issue I picked from her uh, written speech, which she read, okay. the submission, sorry, was that. The heavy matters of national security demanded the presence of Mr. Gilbert Masengeli there as opposed to what was otherwise personal tribulations that he was to meet in court. And below this background is important. It is important for this reason. Lord, very early in the morning, we heard of uh, reports published by none other than the President of the Law Society of Kenya, Madam Faith Monio Diambo, that the three petitioners. had been released and dumped somewhere in Russia. There is a background to it, but just, just be patient. They have been released. You know, I'm, in, I'm from court, I'm not being able to see what is happening. Yes. What are you saying? If, if you could just be patient, you'll get to, to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> so, my lord, it was our expectation today that the respondents will come and say, and we still expect them to say, that the first order for habeas corpus has been complied by us, and here before the court are the three. Relax. And if at all they have complied with the habeas corpus and produced the three, <coughs> Then this litigation will come to a natural end. So we'll be happy if we'll be told that that is the case, because we've just seen this. Number two, my lord, on the substance, subsequent to the conviction and the sentence, Mr. Gilbert Masengeli approached the Court of Appeal on two 
miscellaneous on two civil applications. Approach the Court of Appeal? Yes, on two, sorry, not civil, on two criminal applications. <coughs> One is Nairobi criminal application number E466 of 2004. Four? Four, six, six. But, my lord, if you could kindly ask them to, to be quiet because I need to make these submissions in quietness. Yes, let, let's maintain silence. Yeah, it's, it's not parliament or a public rally. Yes, proceed. Yeah, the first is criminal application number E466 of 2024. Mm -hmm. This criminal application six in the main to stay the order convicting Gilbert Masengeli of contempt of court. Number two, before the Court of Appeal, is criminal application number E 471 of 2024. In this uh, second criminal application, Gilbert Masangeli and the rest of the team have sought an order before the Court of Appeal to suspend and stay the sentence made by this court upon conviction. My Lord, indeed, these two applications were before the Court of Appeal yesterday. And they have been sorry, yesterday? the Court of Appeal on Wednesday, the day before yesterday. And they have now been rescheduled for hearing next week for a date that will be given by the President of the Court of Appeal. So, my Lord, the derivative from the developments at the Court of Appeal are this. That the Court of Appeal is now seized of the twin question of the conviction of Gilbert Masengele and the sentencing of Gilbert Masengele. And for that reason, Lord, the jurisdiction that this court had can only await the Court of Appeals decision on those two applications. <coughs> Father, my Lord, those developments before the Court of Appeal have an impact on the suspended nature of the sentence this Court meted on Gilbert Masengeli. The nature of that suspended sentence is therefore before the Court of Appeal. So, my Lord, with those circumstances, this court can only do two things. One is to hear from Gilbert Masengeli on how he has complied with the order for habeas corpus because he's here. And if he has complied, as we have read, then of necessity, these proceedings must terminate. Or if they don't terminate, then they must be held in abeyance, awaiting the outcome of the challenge against your order for conviction and the order for sentencing. That, my Lord, in my humble submission, 
is what should happen today. I don't know whether any of my colleagues would like to speak. No, from the petitioner side. Okay. Uh, let's, let's get that. I rejoined her from... Uh... Oh, my Lord, uh, the Vice President of the Law Society is here. All right. Let me put him on record first. And of necessity, he must speak. Just to say he has something, or if he doesn't have anything, then he will say as much. Your name? Uh, Amasa Amasa Biden Biden. Uh, Mora Kabat. You have to say something? My Lord, uh, the President uh, Emeritus Harvey has summarized what we had to say. Just for record, I was, uh, I was uh, attending the admission of advocates, that is why I did not come in good time. But uh, as a law society, we are eager to see this matter concluded to its logical conclusion within the procedure and the framework that, that this court deems fit with the nature and the weight in our petition. That is all, my Lord. My Lord, with your kind permission, the summary of what the Law Society of Kenya is saying is that this court is fantastic official. It's already concluded this matter. It is pending before the Court of Appeal. And the moment it goes to the Court of Appeal, the jurisdiction changes and the matter at the Court of Appeal has to be dispensed with first before the proceedings here go. I know the last one is that the issue of conduct of court has now been personalized between the judge and the convictee. And therefore, the convicted person has to comply first before they have audience of this court. They have to show that they have obeyed the court, then the court can hear them. I thank you, my Lord. Mr. Miller. 